Hey guys, uh, Kevin Hawkins with Kaku Kayak here. Uh, we're at the Kaku HQ, and we're going to do an updated install of the pedal drive. Uh, we have we have changed up the pedal drive mount uh, so that now it's a it's a two piece model. Um, so we're going to show you how to do this. Uh, there's a few improvements with going up to this two piece model. For a big thing, it, it took away some of the the sway that you're getting while pedaling and the other ones, but uh, it also makes install easier and um, it's less likely to get damaged. So a lot of different things about it. Um, for one thing, if you do order the Zulu with the pedal drive, before we didn't like to uh, put the mount in because it could get damaged. So um, with this one, if you order a Zulu with the pedal drive, this will already be in for you. Uh, so you won't have to worry about this part of the video. <clears throat> All right, so first thing you want to do is you got to get your blue lock tight. Um, you need your Allen key. I do recommend if you have one, uh, the Allen key that has the little ball on the end here, that gives you a little bit of movement side to side while tightening, uh, which will help, especially in these top bolts in the front. So uh, I've already added blue lock tight to this bolt. First ones you want to do is you want to put these four bolts in the front up here. Okay, so uh, I start at the top myself but you put these four bolts in first. When you, when you get them started, uh, you want to, um, you don't want to tighten them all the way down to start off. You just want to get them, them all kind of threaded in there. Make sure it's good. Now, <clears throat> occasionally um, they, they all shrink a little bit different, um, but you know, we, we get the inserts in there, the exact measurements of what they need for the aluminum. And the aluminum's always cut at the exact measurements we want. Now plastic is a little different because plastic does like to, uh, it shrinks when, um, and when it cools down out of the mold. Um, and they can shrink a little differently depending on, uh, you know, different factors, how, how, quick they, how quick they cool down, all that kind of stuff. So anyways, they're, they're sometimes, you know, one will be shrunk a little differently and maybe you're having a hard time getting um, getting a bolt in there uh, in those times we have to drill the hole out so if you're if you're looking in there and the the bolts um, the inserts are a little bit out of line you might have to drill the holes a little bit bigger uh, to get them in there <clears throat> it's kind of rare but it does happen now you might ask yourself well why don't you just go ahead and drill the hole out bigger to start with well I don't I don't want it drilled out bigger unless it needs it you don't want slop in there but if it needs it bigger uh, to make it work then it's still going to be tight um, so we don't want we don't want slop we need it just want it just as big as needed to get the job done All right, so the four of these bolts are all threaded now. So now I'm, I'm going to go ahead and tighten them all up. Okay. Once those are all tight, then we come to the front ones. Now, Sometimes you will, when you get to this point, this top part will be bent up just a little bit. That's why we do the front first. And also these have little slots in them to allow a little bit more for, um, for the shrinkage and movements in it. So that way this one now, now that you bolt these in, you can do this and it'll pull that aluminum right down to where it's supposed to be um, tight to the deck the way it's supposed to be. So that is why you do the first, the front four first. That'll help you out and eliminate a lot of frustration. So now I'm going to go ahead and just put these four bolts in to the deck part of the mount. Okay, so now that's totally bolted in there. It's nice and tight. Now all you have to do is mount. We don't need the blue Loctite anymore. All you do is mount this. This is four bolts. Uh, you got uh, one inch bolts here with um, a nylock nut 
you just want to get all four of those bolts in there and uh, and then the mount is, is ready to rock and roll okay so I'm gonna finish this part up and then we are going to get on to the uh, rudder and once the rudder is installed uh, we're pretty much ready to go we'll just have to put the pedal drive together so we're going to get involved in that and then we're also make sure this is going to be a separate video for putting the pedal drive together so make sure you um, don't stop here with this video that you go to that one I'm going to get involved in how to put the pedal drive together and things to look out for um, and uh, you know and how to break it in right and how to do some maintenance to it okay Okay, so next thing we're going to do is install the rudder. So uh, first thing we got to do is you're going to receive uh, your cable, your housing, um, the new tomahawk rudder blade with the rudder housing. Uh, you got your steering handle. You got your gudgeon. You got all the bolts that go with it. We'll get into each thing individually. First thing to do is we got to put in the housing. So we're going to drill, and the way that I drill is I just put this thing upside down, set it on the tracks right there and uh, go ahead and drill your hole. Now, I'm using a, I'm using a 3 8 Oh, I didn't have the bit tight enough in there, but it still works, so it's all good. I'm using a 3 8 drill bit, uh, so that should be good enough to make this a, a snug fit with your housing in here. Sometimes, um, depending on what drill bit you're using there, you know, you might need to wall it out just a little bit. But uh, that 3 8 should make it so it can still slide, but it still fits snugly. What I do now is I go ahead and I flare this side out here. Now, I'm using a, a, a torch here, but um, you can, a, a lighter will work. You don't have to go by torch to make this happen it doesn't take that much heat to get the plastic to soft enough to be able to flare it out nice but I just flare out a nice mushroom there make sure you don't thin the plastic out too much you just want to make a nice mushroom and keep it still thick and strong so this will keep the black tubing from being able to slide down in there okay so next we drill our hole at the back there's a little divot in there okay now we open the back hatch we find that tubing once we got that tubing there if I stop fumbling it here Push that, feed that through the hole. Now once we've got that fed through the hole, we go ahead and pull that front part in tight to the side there. So what I do is uh, scissors will, will cut this on their own, but to make it nice and easy, you go like butter. I just go ahead and warm my scissors up. If you get them a little hot right there, it really goes through like warm butter. Now see, it almost went back in there. I'm doing this for the video here so you can see, and I wasn't holding on to it. That's okay, I mean, I could still feed it through, but a lot easier if we got that so you'll have a little bit you know quite a bit there I mean it's about an inch but now I'm just gonna go ahead and warm that up and I'm gonna start flaring that out it's okay if it's got a little you know don't try and press this all the way up against there it's okay if it's got a little gap that gives you a little leeway so that you're not um, you know pulling that cable so hard you end up jamming this thing back inside and then you got to redo everything so all right so now that that is finished we're going to go ahead and then put our cable through our housing I'm just going to push that through there 
and then we have to install our cable lugs. Now, I have, for our use here at the warehouse, we have crimpers for doing this. Now the front one, or the rear one, you want to have the, the whole vertical. So we crimp that on there. Now these um, crimpers I got at Lowe's, I think they were 30 bucks or something. I see them on Amazon for more, but I think they were 30 bucks at Lowe's. Now they make a nice crimp on there, but I do believe you don't have to get these crimpers. I think you can do it with a nice good pair of channel locks or pliers. I'm going to test that theory. Okay, so this one needs to be this way direction here. So I can hook to the steering handle, which bolt is sideways. So, like I said, I'm going to test the theory of using the channel locks or something. So you don't have to go buy yourself a pair of crimpers if you have to do this. Let's see if it'll do it. It did it. It's not as nice of a crimp as the other one, but it's on there. It's not coming off. So you do not have to go buy yourself a nice pair of crimpers to do this. You can do it with a good pair of channel locks. So there it is. You could, uh, I could even work on that a little bit more, but that's on there tight and it ain't coming off, you know, so you shouldn't be jamming that thing down so hard that you pull this out. I mean, it's just got to steer a rudder. So that will work. Okay, next step is to put the steering handle in. You want to just make it easy and slide the track bolts right in there. Okay. You don't have to tighten these things down all the way uh, right off the bat because uh, first thing we really got to do is um, we got to make sure we got everything lined up. So. I would just get everything kind of on here, uh, ready to size everything up before we place everything exactly where it's supposed to go. Okay, so now we're going to put our, our rudder gudgeon on. So we're back with our Allen key. You know, so I'm not doing this with power tools. You know, uh, one of the important things with making sure you don't mess anything up on your brand new badass kayak is inserts. You want to, um, you don't want to over tighten in them. You don't want to force anything. You see how nice and easily the boat threads in there? That's the way it's supposed to be. If it's not threading in there nice, then something's wrong. Uh, you're cross threading it. You know, something might be in there in the threads. If that's the case, if you start screwing this in, it doesn't seem like it's going in right, then, um, you know, then there might be something wrong with the thread. So you want to, might want to pull it unscrew it out and put it back in see if you're cleaned out or see if you can look in there and see if there's anything stuck in the threads maybe some plastic got in the threads from molding something like that so just don't ever force the bolt especially if it's cross-threaded because if you strip that insert in there it's pretty much toast it's it's, uh, it's hard to fix so um, you know just everything should go good never force a bolt and never over tighten so with the hand putting it in you're, you're not going to over tighten especially like this and now if you put it this way you could crank down on it pretty hard but it's not necessary you want it you want it snug but not over tight um, the the blue loctite is going to help them stay where they're supposed to be at so that's good okay so now you got your rudder blade and you'll see you got this bar in here this is uh, for hooking up the steering so you need to um, we've already put the bolts in here where they're supposed to go for you. Make that a little easier. You know, something you don't have to worry about figuring out. Put those in those two holes on your 
rotor blade housing and you want to tighten those up. All right, then you're going to put this in here and put that on there. Now I'm just going to go ahead and tighten these two bolts up. I'll save you some time on this video by doing it off camera. Okay, so I've tightened these up. Uh, this I've just got on here hand tight. Uh, you do want to, when you're taking this out, do it a little bit more in hand tight. Don't, don't tighten it up too tight. You want it to still be able to rotate on the gudgeon good. So, um, you know, just don't tighten it too tight. And then, uh, but you want the nylock on there at least so it's not come off, coming off on you. Uh, this, now I've tightened this up, so you, you just don't want too much play in here. See this? There's, there's not much play in there, but it's still loose enough so that it's able to rotate when you're going to be turning this. Now we're going to put on our rudder blade. So you, you pull this, I should have turned that over there so you guys can see. You pull this little cotter pin out on this side, so that pulls this piece out. Now see how it's got those two notches? Those are going to come into play here. So you take your rudder blade, your blood, rudder blade's got the spring on this side, Slide that in there. You want to get this uh, you want to get this little point right in the middle of that hole, right? And then this has a little slot in it. That needs to go over that little piece of that spring. Once you have that, you want to turn a little bit of tension on there so that the rudder blade wants to go down to the down position. See, I don't have it locked yet, but you, you don't want it like this. So you got to preload that spring just a little bit, not too much. The more the tension you put on it, the harder it is to pull up. So I, this rudder blade is a little, so see that? It wants to go down on its own. It is a little bit harder to pull up than the um, old rudder blade is. It must be some kind of geometry thing, but it doesn't matter because once you want to go pull this up, it's usually getting pushed up anyway. So if you run up on the boat launch, boat launch is already going to pull it up. So all you're going to do is tighten the rope and lock it into place. Okay, so now we've got um, our rudder cable mounted on both ends. Um, rudders installed, handles here, but we still got our handle loose, right? So now we're going to just uh, do our final adjustments. When the um, lever is in its vertical position, I want the rudder at the rear to be turned slightly to the right. Um, and then that will give you uh, your full uh, steering motion. So once it's vertical here, right, turn right a little bit at the back, we go ahead and tighten these down. And that will give us our best range of motion back there. Now, Now keep in mind, you're always going to get better um, turning radius going to the right. You just get more motion back there. Uh, it'll turn sharper when going to the right. You, you have the boat that stops it from going uh, to the left as far as possible. But it, it still steers good, but to the right you can almost uh, turn on a dime. Uh, so just keep that in mind. Now we've got a little bit too much play here, so I would want to tighten that up some. When it's got too much play there. It, you, you, it's possible to get your bend here. It's also, you don't want to pull this all the way too far because then going back in, it's so long here, it might want to bend. So just don't, don't yank back on this too hard, turn into the left. Um, don't overextend it. You can only go so far to the left, it's going to be hitting the boat. Um, so don't overextend back there. As you take your rope and put it through this little hole here. Put a little knot in it and this runs through. You put your little knot here, run this through here. Through there, put this little. Sorry, I hope I'm not blocking that from the camera. Got that there. Now we're gonna 
Make sure that goes stays in there. Okay, so the rope is run. Okay, so you will get in your pack, you get a little cleat here, and then we put a little extra bag in here with some screws and some extra little guides. So we put this cleat right at this corner here. Now, I use a power tool for this, but once again, I don't over tighten. Bring it to snug. Now, if you, like I said, want to use those bolts, this one you can reach the nuts if you want to put the bolts in there. That goes there. And then just run your rope through there. Let me send you these extra two guides. So now if you don't put these in and you just leave this rope coming up here, it's going to be a little easier to pull the rudder blade up. But like I said, usually when you're going to pull it up, it's because you're running into something on the land, up on the boat ramp or whatever. So it's already going to be raising up. It'll be easy anyways. So if you're more, it's up to you. If you want it easier to pull up, don't put them in. If you like a cleaner deck, put them in. Because it's going to be clean. Okay, I leave that a little loose so that the guide can move a little bit. Okay, so then I put this one here. This runs that line right around your deck there. There you go, nice and clean. And lastly, we put our clam cleat. So you take uh, two little screws that we sent you in your little extra pack. You take your two little screws we sent you in your extra pack. Put your clamp cut right here in this little corner. This is going to make it kind of right to the rear of your inside of your chair. Boom. Run your rope through there. You got your little ball that comes with this. So. I leave it a little gap out here. And I go ahead and tie a little half hitch notch in there. And that's it. So that gives you a little handle for pulling up and releasing your rudder. Okay, so earlier I told you we're going to leave this top part loose. You got the bolts in there, but it's a little loose. That makes that able to move around a little bit. So once you've got your pedal drive installed here, you want to lower it down into position. Okay. Cover plate in here. And what you're doing is you're just making sure that everything fits here together the way you'll want it to on the water. So this is all fit, nothing's too tight, it's working good. Now tighten these bolts down here and everything will be set into place and you're done with your install.